FRM302, the Flysky answer to Crossfire, let's hope. Um, pretty cool, it's got this little blue circle there that indicates whether or not you uh, have connectivity with your receiver, a nice glowing red Flysky, don't know if it does anything. At the bottom we have a switch for uh, what, internal or external power, a, an XT30 connector for external power, uh, and a USB plug there as well. Um, sits like that, so if you put it on the bench it will be resting on the actual module, but it feels pretty rock solid, it doesn't really uh, alter the weight or anything like that. Um, looks pretty good quality, uh, but sadly this is not the video I was hoping to show you, and it's not the video I was hoping to show you because the people at Bang Not So Good sent me this uh, FTR 10 receiver, which is an AFHDS3 receiver, and I'll talk a little bit more in it about this in a sec, um, <clears throat> but I ordered the, the micro one, uh, the 16S I think it is, uh, FS16S, again I'll put a link up there, um, and, and just to show you, this is the only 5 inch I have, I don't really fly the larger quads that often, um, which is the Pro Hawk, and there's no way I'm going to fit this in there, absolutely no way. Even if I pulled that apart, it doesn't look like it lends itself well to being pulled apart, but no chance I'm doing that. So sadly, I cannot show flight footage. What I can do uh, is show you what the binding process looks like, what the menu options are, um, selecting different power uh, options there as well. And I'll also talk about some comparisons with Crossfire in terms of you know pricing and why would I even consider this over Crossfire when Crossfire has proven itself to be the bee's knees. That's what it looks like on its own. And this is how it stacks up compared to a standard <clears throat> module. You can see, yep, side on. As for the receivers, uh, there's the 10 and the 16 to date. They are, I think I've seen the 16 as cheap as 20 US. AliExpress is the cheapest I've seen so far. Uh, but they're roughly around the 30 US dollar mark, which is comparative to the receivers from Crossfire, uh, which range from roughly about if you go to the Crossfire web or the TBS website, 25 US to a little over 100 for their super duper one, but they, they usually sit around the 20, 30 uh, US dollar mark. So um, price wise, about the same. This advertises a 10 kilometer plus range, so around the 10 kilometer mark. Uh, there is a video out doing over 50 Ks, and that's the big bragging point of Flysky at the moment, is that they've broken the 50 K barrier. Um, now, Crossfire on their website says 40Ks on all their uh, products anyway, so much of a muchness really. Uh, the 16 uh, comparatively does 3.5K in the air and 1K close to the ground is what it's saying, which is more than enough. Now my intention is to throw one of those on this, um, which is a Tiny Hawk Freestyle that I've kitted with a Runcam Nano Split. So it should give me enough um, VTX power to, to go some, some decent distance and really test some proximity flying, or at least flying around buildings and trees. In terms of size, the 16 looks to be a little bit smaller than the, the FLI 14, which is a very popular receiver for standard Flysky. Um, so it's probably not something you can put in a whoop. Um, I think it's close to two grams. I'll put some specs up in a sec. Um, but it is pretty impressive for anything above, let's say, two inches or or, um, or something like that. So you, you see the whoops and so forth. And if you can get, you know, 1K out of that, that's more than enough for me. Uh, so that's probably all I can tell you about receivers at the moment. Here she is up close. Um, looks quite nice. I already talked about the glowing lights and everything. Then you've got your USB XT30 external power and external power on off switch. You can see it sticks out quite a bit there. Um, but it's pretty tight. It's very, very tight. That's not going anywhere. If I flip this thing, um, it will actually rest and hover above. So if I move that back, you can see I can slide my finger here. Uh, so it sits nicely. Um, don't know if you'll damage that or not, but anyway, let's let's have a look at how we connect this thing. So for this, I've just um, rigged up a little uh, battery connector here, so I can fire up this receiver um, and bind it across. All right, so jumping straight into the menu, I've set up a new model. I didn't select internal or external module, uh, just to show you what it looks like. So internal module is off, internal RX is off, and um, by the way, with internal RF, um, if we flick that on. To fly sky, you'll see that there's this new RF power mode default or high. That's with the latest, um, uh, the May release of the firmware. And you'll see it's got iBus instead of i um, cosmetic, really. But if I flick that off and just go down to external and select AFHDS3, 
um, there's a few things that pop up. So you can immediately see uh, we've got status connecting uh, and that's where the blue flashing light will just flash. So it's trying to connect. Uh, there's no receiver on so that's just going to stay in connecting. Um, power source internal. Um, mode. I'll talk about mode in a second because that pops up when um, you plug in your receiver. You've got your channel range which is your stock standard stuff etc etc. But then you've got this RF power where you have 25 um, 100, 500, 1 watt and 2 watt which is pretty huge so if I select 100 it seems actually is 100 so that suggests the internal battery is capable of emitting 100 if I then flick to 500 you'll see it stays at 100 so you can't achieve beyond 100 on um, uh, internal battery ok so I'm keeping the receiver there so you can see the flashing light uh, when I scroll down if I select bind uh, I've got the option of unicast slash telemetry or multicast. So you select unicast and you'll see pretty much immediately we've got a solid red light and on the, oops, and on the back um, this goes green. It's pretty cool. Uh, Alright, now I've plugged in just a quick tiny battery here, uh, XD30 battery and I flick this switch um, across to Ext as opposed to int, external, internal. Um, and now that I go down, if I go to my RF power, I go down to 500, you'll see it reflects 500, and I can go all the way to 2 watt, and it will reflect that. So um, that's the external power. So for me, that's the big win. It really is simple to set up. Um, it is plug and play. Uh, it takes all of 20 seconds to get this thing going. Uh, probably the only other thing worth noting is that if I select a stock standard fly sky model Disarmed. Angle mode. Um, that's using the internal receiver this stays powered on uh, now I know that happens uh, with most people with crossfire I know there's the power mod and all that jazz um, but what I have found is with the XJT and one of my multi protocol modules when I flick to internal uh, that switches off so um, you probably need to unplug it or just convert everything to HDS3 if you're going that way so in closing, why would you bother with FRM302 or with AFHDS3 over Crossfire? As far as price goes, you could almost call them even because as this is about 90 something US or about, I think I've seen it as cheap as 130 Aussie, um, the micro, Crossfire Micro TX is 70 US thereabouts, so it's actually cheaper. Um, and there are three uh, TBS Crossfire modules, um, and they range in different different costs. So, so cost-wise, it's not that much different. The receivers are thereabouts the same in terms of cost. Uh, Crossfire has more receivers. Um, there's a belief that sure, this might get that 50 k's and might get that longer distance a little bit further than Crossfire at that distance. I who cares really I mean if, if we go on that far unless you're really into that long range stuff and you, you're breaking some records and that's only a niche so, so that's really redundant I think um, it's yet to be known how well this performs compared to Crossfire where you've got some buildings and some trees and, and what that looks like and, and, and I really hope to be testing um, with this guy um, at least with the, the smaller receiver see how well that performs within proximity to, to objects um, so, so if if cost and quality aren't really that much of an issue or, or are unknowns, for me, why did I buy this over Crossfire? Because I knew it was going to be plug and play. If you own a Nirvana or you own a Paladin, um, it is really simple. It's plug and play. And for many people, uh, the Crossfire has been pl plug and play for those transmitters. But for a lot of other people, uh, the Crossfire has presented um, a lot of challenges. You just need to go to any Facebook forum to see. There's always a question about how do I get this to work on Crossfire? How do I get this to work on Crossfire? And that's not a criticism of Crossfire. That's probably more criticism of how it works with the Nirvana and the Paladin and maybe some other transmitters. So for me, um, I am going AFHGS3 because I don't do long, long range. Um, and so whether it outperforms or doesn't outperform Crossfire, don't care. Um, I just want a really good reliable signal uh, within probably no more than one kilometer and realistically most of the time 500 meters and I don't want to stuff around too much setting this thing up so it works straight away. It took me seconds to get this connected to the, to the receiver so um, that would be what I would base my decision on. What's important to you uh, and if you want plug and play that's the way. That was bad.
Thank you. Bye.